Hello, my name is Emma Fawcett and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Newton Abbey, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Thank you so much for joining me today in Emma's Crafty Space. Today I am bringing to you another little project using the Lighter Than Air suite from the current Spring Summer Catalogue. Um, I love this suite. Um, this is the second project that I've recorded for YouTube here at the moment. Um, so hopefully um, it's something that you might find interesting or that you might like to make yourself. So these little projects I made at my um, Saturday morning class, which was yesterday. And you can see they are very cute. They're 3D and they fall flat and you can put them in the, an envelope. Um, this one here I made, this was my prototype. And the only mistake that I made with this was the balloons can't go above this line, the top here, because then you can't put them into our normal um, C6 envelopes. So that's just a little note to remember, but I'll remind as we're going through this. Um, the initial um, box sizes is from my upline, Gina Connor. She has her YouTube channel, channel Emerald Creations, and she made it with the little gonks. Um, so um, the actual size of the box is and the template of the box itself is taken from Gina's channel. It's just a really good Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I would definitely advise you to um, check out her channel. So um, we'll make a wee start in these and hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So I'm going to give you all your measurements first. So this is obviously the um, the crux and the kind of like the, the main structure of the card. Um, and the card measures four and three eighths by eleven and a half. And then you're going to score the short side at two inches. OK, so if you can imagine this section here with this two inch score on the bottom, that is this part of the, the, the card. OK, so that's your kind of base or the box of the card. So when we actually come to cutting, um, you are going to be cutting all of this here away so we only need this l shape here okay so that's just a little bit of a visual for you then you've got these struts so these are the sections in here that you can see um now there's three in this but you can go to two you know you definitely wouldn't fit any more than three in there but um you could go down to two if you don't want it to be too bulky they measure one inch by four and a half so you need three of those and then you're scoring at half an inch on either end okay then your little layers. Um, now, as you can see, this panel here, there is no point in you putting DSP right down to the bottom there. You can't see it and you're just wasting it. So I, I'm just gonna double check the measurements of this. So that measures three and three eighths um, by three inches. Because as I say, there's no point in you going down four four and three eighths of your DSP because you're just wasting that. So that's a little um, saving tip there for your DSP. Then this little front section here, um, again, it's going to measure three and three eighths and I think it's one and seven eighths. Yep, because we're sizing down and that there's two inches. Then your back panel, which is where you're going to write your greeting. It is going to measure, again, three and three eighths by four and one eighth, okay? So that is that part there, okay? Then we have all these little cutouts, okay? So I've got three balloons in mine, it's up to you. How many are you put in yours? But I want to show you this DSP here. So I've cut all my balloons out of this. Obviously you can stamp your hot air balloons. I'll show you the set here. Um, This here, die. Uh, this has a die, this has a die, and then there's the love heart ones as well. So, but, or if you don't want to do all that and you want to make things a bit quicker for yourself, you can use these. Now, this here doesn't fit in that paper, okay? So, you fit this and this, and then also we have our little baskets. So, everything on this page is die cuttable. They say you only really wanted all love hearts. You can just you can still put that over there. You just need to kind of play about with it so you're getting it right at the bottom. Um, I don't know if that wouldn't know. It doesn't really have the same effect because you've got that peak in there. But you can use basically all that with the heart ones. 
um or as i say the round ones but it's handy as well because you've got your little um baskets as well so there's a good lot of sheets in that i think there's six of each sheet in the, in the pack so you know it does go a long way and i would recommend not to use that on projects to actually you know make use of your dyes and those because the colors are just lovely in it um but that's my recommendation i just maybe it's because i like things quick and easy when i'm doing card prep or class prep um so what i would say is get all your wee baskets and kind of stick them now a little tip for your heart one here see if you add that basket to that you can see the baskets obscured so see that little white um peak i actually chop that off and it means then the basket isn't obscured by the peak of the heart you can see that so i'm going to just stick these all on now because it means they can be sitting gluing while we are doing everything or like drying out just while we're um doing everything else so just a little tiny blob on each peak of the basket and then add that and then you can set them over to one side so you can see now you can see the basket really clear it's a bit squinty so i'm just setting that to one side and it means then they'll be ready to go once we've got everything else done um now the base which is this big blue one it's up to you if you want to use your trimmer or if you want to use scissors um if you're going to use your trimmer make sure you've got a really sharp blade on it because my didn't realize my blade needed repair replaced and it just ate the card and gives a real ragged edge and it's just but it's so raggedy you, you know it's wasteful um so we'll stick that to there and oh move too soon so you can see there pull that down so it means then they're good to go whenever everything's ready oh and then obviously you've got little clouds in there now you've only got one of each side in dies but i've actually cut out three i like everything in threes and then this beautiful little stitch banner is part of the dies too so let's get going with this so as i said i have um kind of marked out what we don't need here so i'm going to bring my trimmer and i just want to show you something about the stamp up trimmers see these little blades that little line indicates where the blade stops okay so i am going to put this into my valley here up here and i know i want to come down to this line down here okay i'll just move that up there so i want to come down to here so i will drag that as, until that line meets this score line and then i know I'm, i've got it all cut where i need it to be i'm just going to double check that i've got it in there just bring that down make that line and then i want this piece gone so again i'm going to put this in the valley up here and i'm going to bring this line down to match this one so just double check before you start and then that should just slide out like that so that's your result uh, obviously that is i've got pen pencil mark on mine but that can go in your scrap bin now and you should if you've got a nice clean um fresh blade then you get that nice tight um crisp edge on that okay so you don't really need to do this but i just do as a habit and then i am going to glue oh sorry i'm going to burnish this now i'm only burn, burnishing these lines my vertical lines that one can stay where it's at okay i'm just trying to find my bone folder now these need to be really really um like well burnished because this card needs to have a bit of movement in it and obviously it's going to be squished in an envelope as well so i am going to put glue down here again tombow is my go-to gives me a bit of time to adjust if i've done anything wrong you just bring that over to meet itself Okay, like that and just go both sides so that I've got the option of it closing both ways. Okay, so your little struts, um, again, 
give them a good burnish. These are going to be in the Z, so one's going to fold in away from you and one's going to come towards you. this one one towards you one away again good burnish because you you want the card to have movement okay because you can see the way they move with the structure and the last one one towards you one away and it means then that they um look at the z okay so first strut goes in and they kind of space themselves out um, on their own um, because they're all, it means that they become like they're in an, a half an inch apart. So I'm just putting a tiny little bit of glue on these. And I'm going to hold one end in while I place the other. Okay. So I want this to be flush up to the top of the card, pressed in there. Okay. And then I'm going to just close the card over like that and guide that down with my finger that it's flush to the top as well. Okay. And it means then whenever you go to close your card over, because you've 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 started it in this position, it, it's happy to go back into that. Okay. So you can see it's got plenty of movement because those um, lines have been really nicely burnished. Okay, so we're going to repeat that. A little bit of glue. I would definitely use wet glue for this because once you've set your tape down, there is no budging it. So I'm just bulging that out just to get it to settle in. I'm putting this side in, and if you need to, you can use your hand, put your hands in just to guide that up to the top. Okay. And then again, you're going to close it. And hopefully that will press that one there into, into place as well. But you might just need to guide it from the top because you want it to be flush with that top edge. So you can see there. Now, for some reason, and I don't know why, this one here overshoots a little bit. And I don't know if it's because whenever we're scoring things, um, like obviously the score line uh, it's like quite a big valley so it just kind of overshoots a slightly slightly bit so i am just going to take a little nip of this one okay so it's still got the mechanism but that wee bit is just slightly shorter okay so this is our last one going in so hold this kind of help it in there guide that in there it's a bit fiddly but it's worth it and then again we're going to hold that there push that down and let it swing to the left so you can see i just need to guide that more in there and let it settle in there so you can see they're all flush with those edges and that is you. That is basically, you know, your, your main structure of your card. Now, for the one that I did for my class, um, I'm actually going to change this. And I've cut strips of um, card. And I have used the basic borders, which are available in the main annual catalogue. Um, these are lovely wee stitch dies. And you can see there's this lovely, like, um, cloud shape in it. So that was a one inch strip. Um, now there is a join in it. I think it only comes to here and then I had to relay it down over it. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put these just poking out over the top. So um, just measure this and then it means then we we'll know. And it just means then it kind of makes it a wee bit more interesting. So that's three and a half inches on the bottom. So just go slightly under three and a half inches per strip. And it'll just allow you, allow you that wee bit of space um, to kind of let it fall down into there. Just not go quite to the edge because obviously you, you've got the thickness of the card to take into consideration there. So we need one, two, we actually need four. I'm hoping that equates to three and a half inches. Uh, 
Um, these were actually left over from another project um, that I'm also going to do a tutorial on. Um, I'll show you towards the end what that one was. And they can go down as far or as high as you want them to be on, on this. But yeah, less is more. And obviously they've got that nice stitch detail on them. So you want that to be at the front. So you're putting your glue on the first one anyway. You're putting your glue there. And because we've gone slightly smaller than the three and a half, um, that will just slot down in there nice and snug. Now, the only other thing that you might <laughs> struggle with now is deciding if you're going to put them to the back or to the front. I'm going to do mine to the front so that you can always just see the white. And um, Again, if you wanted to, you could have them kind of staggered as they're going. But just be mindful, your balloons cannot be taller than this. So you don't want them being so high that you can't see the balloons. And they're having to go higher and higher and higher. So they do need to be down a wee bit. So um, for the next one, because I'm putting my clouds to the front, the glue has to go on the back here. In fairness, you could do your struts as white. Um, and you don't have to do, then you don't have to worry about this. But I like the cloud shape that these are given. So I'm just going to flatten those down and help them settle in. Okay. Again, one here. Nice and snug down into there. Again, flatten them down. You can see these here edges here are quite sharp. What you can do is just snip them off, but we'll do, do you know what? We'll do those after when everything's settled and um, not wet. And still moving about a bit because they are a bit wet, which is why I love Tombow. You still have that little bit of time just to kind of adjust it and get it all in its place. And then last one. A little bit fiddly, but I think it's worth it just to add that little bit extra to it. So I'm just going to smooth these little bits off here. Just get, just be careful when you're doing that because you don't want to damage this part of your card. Um, I suppose that's something you could do even before you attach those in. So that looks a bit healthier looking now. Okay, so um, leave it a DSP here for down this back panel. Again, you don't have to use DSP. You could actually use, before you put it all together, you could actually use that as an outline and your blending brush with Bami Blue and actually just do little cloud marks on it. Be that cute. Okay, so stick that down. You want a little border around the edge as well as up around the top. decorative piece along the front there. Nice little polka dots. Honestly the DSP in this suite is just beautiful. Look at all those lovely colours. Pastels. It's lovely. Okay. So now right if um this panel on the back um if you're wanting to have a greeting on it i very rarely put greetings on the back panels unless i'm making a card for um like made to order um but if you're wanting to put a greeting on it now's your time to do it because once it's on the card the card becomes a wee bit uneven and bumpfly so that is one of my words i use um so now would be your time to put stamp your greeting on before you attach this part Okay, and again, you've got that nice wee border all the way around the outside. And there you go. So, 
last thing, well, no, not really the last thing. So this is the little banner. Um, um, there's plenty of sentiments in this little suite, but I actually really like generic cards, so I'm not going to put Wish Big on this. I'm actually going to use Hello There out of this celebration stamp set. Um, what's this called? Softly sophisticated, it's called. Um, I just think um, it's a very generic, you can, it can be like for any occasion then. And that's why I really like, I like cards that you can pull out of the box um, at any moment's notice. So, and again, you can do this um, banner, whatever direction you want it to be. So, hello there. And I'm going to use all the edges of my dimensionals because nothing goes to waste. I'll stick it to the front. There we go. So, last but not least, now is we need to get little strips of window sheets. So, these are just scraps of mine and they're cut at one centimeter wide. And, um, what I will say to you is, I'm just like talking about a better space here. You don't want the card being too bulky, okay? Um, so I use glue dots for these um, because they're just, they give you a little bit of rise, but not too much. And they're super sticky. So another little tip I would recommend is when you're attaching your hot air balloons, you don't stick this to your basket because your basket's a bit flimsy. Like, look at that. So you want to go up into the actual main balloon and at the end of the day they're see-through so you can't really see them in the background there and you're not going to need this very long believe it or not because obviously you can't go too high because again remember you can't go above this so like that just looks like it's floating above the clouds i just love it it's just so cute um and i think the clouds have really taken it made it much nicer um so you just have to play about now and get your position. Because there's glue dots, until you really push them in, you still get a wee bit of a time to kind of adjust. So don't worry about that. Um, so I'm going to place all my hot air balloons and then I'm going to dot the clouds in between them. So a little glue dot. Oh, didn't lift it. Give it a good press. And then... Again, onto the main balloon, not the basket. And then snip a bit off. Now, whenever you're working with your, these little pieces of acetate or window sheets, I would definitely recommend that you have a liner or something down so you can see it because you end up losing it all over the place. And you, pull them, you can pull it over to the side just to get your positioning. That's just literally sitting in there and it's only now that I press it down at that glue dot's going to completely stick. And then my little purple one, my little heart one's last. Again, up into the balloon. And he's going to go lower down, maybe into that wee space at the front there. Doesn't matter if they're overlapping because whatever angle you're looking at this card, you're going to see things differently, okay? So I'm going to add a few wee floaty clouds. taller but again I'm going to need to close the card over so that I'm not doing it too tall so I want him up here but not too tall you can see him there just at the back and our last wee one oh, my glue cuts dots too 
too far down this tape. Just use a different piece because that will just leave a smear on that and it will be seen. That's the only thing about the window sheets. Once um, like they get a bit grimy, it's very, very hard to get them back to their original clean, clear look. And then do this one here. So just bring that forward. That is it. I actually think the it needs needs a wee yellow balloon in there, but it really is. There only is one full yellow one on it. Um, all the other ones are like kind of purpley painted colours and the blues. But that is pretty much it. Um, I just think that's so cute, especially you can, I think the clouds definitely, definitely make a massive difference on it. And then again, if you want to add a couple of these, I'm actually going to not put it on this one because I think they're a wee bit, I think because they're circular and then the papers polka dots might be a bit lost on it. Maybe just, no, I'm just going to leave them. Um, less is more, <laughs> my motto. Um, so you can see they are absolutely adorable. Um, very, very simple. Just fold it either way. It's going to go into your envelope. Um, definitely, if you have this sweet and you have like a cloudy effect, I think you, it, it definitely just adds that little bit extra. This little card, uh, again, it's used from, again, it was, I used Gina Connors um, tutorial to get that initial box, but this was the Christmas card I made for my parents using the old holy night suite um like i just i loved it and um, like this kind of shadow effect with all the characters from the nativity in it and then like there was a lovely um uh, sentiment in it as well so they absolutely loved it hopefully i've inspired you to try your own um two very very different styles of card but using the same template um you can really use them for anything like a bunch of flowers anything um, so hopefully you have got to make a new one. So again, as usual, I will list everything that I've used in the comments below. Again, there's a link to my online store. If you don't have a demonstrator of your own, feel free to go for a little shop and a browse there. Um, and oh, I'm going to show you that other project. I was saying to you that I'd actually cut these out for another project. Well, it was for these little cuties here. So I'm going to do a wee tutorial for these um, at another stage. I just wish I could kind of show you. Like hanging <laughs> properly um but yeah that's another wee one um for another day but thank you so much for joining me um i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and um, take care bye bye